Welcome back, you beautiful souls. Thank you so much for keeping it locked. You know what time of the week it is, what time of the day it is. It's time to delve back into the culinary hotline. Bling! Ding, ding, ding! Ah, it's been too long. Everybody's favorite chef, a Clem chef, is here just for you. No, we're not doing seafood because I know that was like a, yeah. a three part thriller. People wanted to know more, but we've had a ton of great questions come through and you're ready to answer. And of course, we are loving being outdoors. So maybe that's inspired us this morning. We've been dealing with alfresco dining, a great way to set the scene outside, but now we need to back it up with a little bit of culinary inspiration. A man. That you've decked the halls, buddy. You have decked the We've got the some halls. interesting questions today. Really And um, talking stuff. about alfresco cooking, we've just been like, as much as we can, just like heading outside and yeah. eating outside. It makes every meal an event. Just to chill outside as the sun starts setting. It gets a bit poetic, romantic. You look into hey. your partner's eyes. Like I'm looking at you like right now. Hey, you lean in. And yeah. it's beautiful and just it's romantic. Just make every meal now, amazing. You, you yeah. really do appreciate living in this beautiful country when you can get outdoors and absolutely savor it. So let's get right in here. We've had some great questions, so thank you so much. If you've got any questions, feel free to give us a shout. Feel free to connect with us on our social media platforms. We'd love to hear from you. But this one's coming from Linda from Mpumalanga. And she is saying, how to cook gizzards correctly. Oh, I love this one. She always finds them to be too tough. Okay. So it's less of a question and more of a, oh. She right. just can't do it, man. Is that, whoa. whoa. Hang on. Could that be her? I hope so. It's either that or Batman. Uh, a very good morning. Who am I speaking to? It's Linda. Linda! Linda, yay! Linda a very good morning. I'm going to put you on speakerphone here so both Chef Clem and I can chat to you. Uh, Linda, thank you so much for connecting with us. Um, we love to hear from you. So I understand you're having trouble with your gizzards. Talk us through your conundrum. Well, not my gizzards, it's the chicken's gizzards. <laughs> <laughs> and you're funny, you're made for TV, I love it. Um, so what is the problem here? Just always too tough, too chewy? Yeah, always too tough. You don't think, you think you talk to people and they've got the same problem. So I want to solve all their problems as well as my problems. I love, I love that. You're doing it for the team. For everyone. Okay, so if you think about the the anatomy of the gizzard, right? These are muscles that are continuously working. The heart continuously pumps. The the neck, if you think of the neck of a chicken, it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always doing yeah, thing. Yeah, doing yeah. A, so yeah. those meat, the, the meat there, the meat in the heart, the meat in the stomach is just continuously working. They're quite tough because they've developed strong muscle around that. There's a lot of tissue that yeah. you've got to break down. Okay. The only way you can break that down is low and slow cooking. So, do you want to do this one? I've got some stuff. Linda, stomach. say it with me. Low, low and, and slow. slow. Okay, so... That's why they're amazing in poikis, because poikis go for such a long time. Uh, so by the time the poikis done, that meat is completely softened, it's beautifully tender, and you get exactly, that's exactly what you want out of gizzards. So gizzards, give it. Because there is a lot of flavor there. Tons. Again, because that muscle is working so much, as it develops muscle, it also develops flavor. Yeah. Same thing about chicken versus white meat and dark meat. Yeah. The dark meat, not as tender as the white meat, but has more flavor. flavor. Exactly. So let's get to it. Okay, so how so, are we gonna do this, bro? We're gonna make a nice aromatic, like curry-ish, Here's a dish, okay? okay. So this is enough. So this is from the Lazy Makoti. This is her recipe. Oh wow! And I like introducing curry into when you're making giblets or when you're making offal in general because sometimes people say, ah, oh, I don't like the flavor or yeah, whatever. It's too gamey. Because it is quite powerful. Yeah. So a good way is to add spice to it. You know, you complement it. So onions are going nice and soft. We're cool. gonna go in with a little chili powder. Because you do, you roast, you roast off your spices first when you're making a curry. Yeah, bag. absolutely. Always. Chili powder, a little um, masala going in, a little. Sorry, that wasn't masala. It was chili powder, chili powder, paprika. Okay. Now we're doing garam masala. masala. Cool. There we go. Um, ginger and garlic. So okay, exactly then. like you said, we're gonna roast all the spices. But what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna flavor the oil. Ah, you so see. The oil carries the flavor through. I stole that intellectual property and everyone thought I was like a culinary genius because I was like, the reason why I'm doing this and roasting off the, the, you know, the, the flavors in the oils, because that oil is going to permeate through the entire dish. Absolutely. It carries the flavor. It carries right? the flavor. And bay leaves, yeah? Bay leaves. Curry leaves. I actually was supposed to use some of the bay leaves for another recipe, but my rule is whenever onions go into a pan, add bay leaves. Because okay. I've started using bay leaves a lot more because you say that I must. Do you know, and it's not so about, much, it's not about the flavor. It's what I'm starting to find out. It's about the way that it breaks down fats and it breaks down elements of that dish. Really? So it releases other flavors. Absolutely. Love so that's that. the thing. But you want to get it in there whenever you can. And this, you're not too high a heat here, hey? You're not no. burning your spices. No. You're just 
Because what I'm looking for, which is exactly what we spoke about, as soon as your oil starts looking that color, where it starts taking on the color of the spices, mm. that's good. Perfect. And where you can smell, it doesn't smell Because it's raw. gonna keep cooking for a long time. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Oh, I get that, okay, so, brilliant. So, there we go, salt goes in. There's no such, you can't get a good curry without a generous amount of salt. Not to make it salty, but you can have the best spice mix in the world. If you don't even have salt in there, you're not gonna taste anything. The salt activates it, okay. There we go, okay. Chicken stomachs, my favorite. So what I also like doing is I do, I cook them low and slow in a curry, then I take the chicken stomachs out, I skewer them on the braai. Oh, oh, wow. It is so smoky and so delicious. Yeah, it that's is so good. adding a whole different flavor profile layer. Love Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So you don't need to brown it like you would normally, like if you want to brown your chicken to get extra flavor, you don't, don't need, need it. There's it. a lot of flavor in there already. You don't need to seal it. Yeah. But what you do want to do is you want to get a nice amount of the oil on the chicken so you could like really start soaking up that flavor. And then the next step is pepper. And again, I'm very generous with pepper in curries. And you just want to go with water. You can add tomato to this. You can add tomato and um, paste tomato puree, but kind of just keep on tempering it. Again, this is why it works so well in a poiki. To make it nice and rich, I would add a little bit of tomato to it. Okay. It's gonna cook, it's gonna thicken. If you want it nice and saucy, that's when you add the tomato. What's gonna happen is that sauce is gonna slowly start reducing when you put the lid on. So when, by the time it's done, the onions are completely soft. Those stomachs are coated in that curry space, oh. spice, and then you get steamed bread. Oh my and goodness, you just and then you get just in there. You make your own bread. You, you make, make your own bread. And you smash it. I absolutely love that. Um, so that's the key here, oh, Linda uh, yeah. and the army. Last thing, it's gonna go for about an hour. At least. Like again, nice and low and slow, about an hour, and you see it'll start getting more tender. If you want to let it go for three hours, because in it's the such context a... of a poiki, if you wanted to build this up, what would you put with this? So, okay, we're going, let's, let's just do it like a nice chicken one. So if you want to make it a, a beautiful offal pot, go with chicken necks, go with chicken hearts, go with the stomachs like we've done. Oh. And then you can go and add, at the end, go and add some chicken pieces, your regular chicken pieces to it. Do you want those little bits that are gonna have all of the flavor so that when you take it out, you can get into all the little bones and blah, 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 blah. Yes, Absolutely. so this won't break apart. So you can literally cook it for about three hours. That muscle's not gonna fall apart. It's just gonna get more tender, more tender. So time is your friend in this one, let it just go. But you're not using time though. No time. Not no time, just, but just, lots just, of time. Just if that eat. makes any sense. Okay. okay. Slow and low, you can find this a beautiful new curry take on how to cook offal in uh, on expressoshow.com. Absolutely love that. All right, let's jump on to another question here that is beautiful. Um, and I'm hoping that we're gonna be able to um, get her on the line because this one is relating to something that I absolutely She's there. I hope it's her. Wow. I hope it's her. It could be could be one of our mothers, but hello mom. Hello, who's there? Hello, it's Marlene. Ah, Marlene. Um, Hello, thank you. Uh, it's so good to have you connect with us. Obviously, I'm stood alongside the greatest chef in the world. Oh, wow. Chef Clem, who is ready to answer <laughs> your question. So I'm going to put you on speakerphone and then you fire away. What is your kitchen conundrum today? Okay, thanks. Um, chef, I've got some mussels in shelves. Mussels in shelves. Must I boil, can I boil them from frozen? Because I tried it and none of the shells opened. Ah. Okay. Um, so we're talking about seafood the past few weeks, and yeah. I, I, we were hoping to do more. One of them was going to be about mussels. So mussels oh. in shells, essentially when they're frozen, they're still alive. Okay. Sounds horrible, okay. but it's okay. Apparently they don't have a nervous system. Our vegan in the background is like freighting right now, yeah, but it's yeah, fine. But so what happens is when, is you, what it is. when you freeze mussels in their whole shell, um, you, when you want to start cooking them, you do want to let them thaw. And the good thing about the mussels is that Whale sounds in the background. Is that a, was that a whale? Was that an actual whale? <laughs> my baby. <laughs> um, my okay. grandson, actually, not my baby. Eh? <laughs> oh, it's very sweet. It's very um, making me miss my girl. Yeah. The good thing about the mussels, they don't take long to yes. thaw out. They take about twenty minutes to thaw out, and um, then okay. you can add them to the pot. And the reason is you want to make sure you cook all the way through the mussel. They're not going to pop open as much as they would when they are fresh, but, but they still will it, open. They will open slightly. And also, so that's and, the thing about cooking mussels from frozen. They're not going to open up all the way. They're not going to butterfly. So the rule is when you're cooking fresh mussels and they don't butterfly all the way, you discard them. Okay. When they cook from frozen and you thaw them out, it's just going to pop open. So don't be scared, that's fine. But yes, thaw your mussels out. It doesn't take long. And that way you're sure to cook all the way through the mussel because you want to do that, especially if it's been frozen. And that's the way to cook mussels. I love, love, love mussels. 
So that's a very good question. Absolutely love it. Well, hopefully that's answered your question. Just a little bit of patience, thaw them out. They won't take too long. And then just be aware that they're not going to fully butterfly once they are cooked, but they will still open so you know they're a healthy, good muscle. Brilliant, brilliant question. Um, absolutely love it. Thank you so much. Um, any more questions, conundrums? We are ready to help. We are ready to answer. We are loving dining outdoors at the moment. Alfresco inspiration is what we're after. More on the way.